What the hell? So I'm sure we all know about the mid-season update, if you even want to call it that, that we recently received from the blog on Friday for Halo Infinite. While the stuff in there is good, I was just kind of expecting a bit more. Because this update does have some really great stuff in it. We got talking about the networking, which got addressed with the desync and they lowered down the pings. I've been getting a lot better pings to my servers now since the update. It's been basically like 30 to 60 at the most, which has been fantastic. I've actually noticed the desyncing being a little bit less. Of course, I've still been seeing clips on the internet all about that kind of stuff. But they did say they implemented some telemetry to add into it so they can focus on gathering more data about that. It also helped reduce the more banding with vehicles, which I still saw that as well. Uh, also, the first person animations that you guys probably have noticed that a lot of the animations playing at 30 frames per second or something like that. Uh, this is kind of a similar kind of frame rate issue we had with the MCC when it first launched. Looks like they'll be addressing that with this patch, which is fantastic. Kind of help have a more cohesive kind of experience. Campaign improvements is great. Uh, you know, stability has been a really big issue with pretty much every single HDS event we've had. There have been people dropping out of games, getting kicked out of games, stability issues on PC especially. And so it looks like that's going to be addressed. Of course, it's not going to be the final step to make everything absolutely perfect, but it's a step in the right direction. Big Team Battle getting an update with a motion tracker growing from 18 to 24 meters. Me, I was kind of iffy about this. I think 24 is more the traditional length of the radar, and we'll see how that plays out. Personally, I would like to see players rely more on their senses because pretty much everybody has a headset. It's pretty easy to play with teams nowadays, and you know, I would see you have like UI elements telling people where they are does seem to be a little bit too much information for the player. That's just my opinion. Of course, I like to play hardcore with no radar, so there's also that as well. And of course, anti-cheat improvements are coming in here as well. I've seen a lot of comments of people talking about, hey, where are the improvements to anti-cheat happening? Well, it is happening. The only problem is that like they can't really detail exactly what's happening with anti-cheat because if they did, that's kind of like giving the playbook to the enemy team. You can't be doing that. And so we'll just see what happens with this update uh, when it comes to anti-cheat. I uh, mean, personally, I haven't come across any cheaters because I'm more of like a low tier Onyx player, but cheating, especially in a free to play game, is pretty much a never ending arm race. Like there's always gonna be a cheater at some point. It's more about finding ways to mitigate the issue enough to where it's very rare of an occasion. Right now, it's a bit too common especially at the higher tier gameplay. But yeah, like that's it. That's the mid season update. And so moving forward, guys, I'm thinking that like, honestly, if you're honest, unless you're super excited about any kind of like events coming around, like the tactical ops event, which has some pretty good customization. And I won't lie. It does look pretty sweet, but it looks like it will pro probably provide just more, just uh, different types of SWAT variants, which is like, eh, like kind of cool but like nothing really anything they really bring people back in the halo right and honestly for me at this point guys like i've been trying to keep positive about this but at this point like this kind of hit me hard where i was like man we really aren't going to get any kind of major changes to halo infinite until season two it seems like i was kind of hoping for more of an overhaul this is more just kind of like a quality of life improvement patch kind of thing which really isn't a whole lot to announce about like weapon balancing like making the ravager play better making the plaza pistol more reliable on its tracking against players maybe having the pulse carbine have better tracking or just something that kind of makes up the gameplay a little bit but really nothing now there are a lot of things that are in need of work when it comes to halo infinite and i'm pretty sure most of these kind of updates that we're looking for are gonna be coming in season two meaning weapon balancing new content new events and things to do within halo infinite i think it's all gonna be coming in season two guys in may so honestly if you're kind of feeling burnt out about the game just yeah, maybe just take a couple weeks off. Maybe just not play until season two comes out. The thing is like, don't burn yourself out in the game. Like the game is designed to not be like a grind machine as they called it. They've made improvements to the progression to where it doesn't feel like that anymore. It certainly was at first, but I honestly wouldn't really expect any kind of extra content or any major changes coming to Halo Infinite until season two, which is kind of a shame because I certainly was expecting like a mid season update, especially for season one being six months long, twice as long as a season is supposed to be, which is they said, it's previously was supposed to be three months that they can't they had to realize like hey six months that any kind of major content update coming to the game uh might not be the best move and that certainly is true 
Uh, but right now, like we haven't heard anything about new content coming to the game. We haven't heard anything about that roadmap that we looked into. And I've seen a lot of comparisons about Halo 5. Like Halo 5, we were getting monthly updates, brand new content, things to come back and play. Well, a dev actually from 343 talked about this and it wasn't very positive. In a reply to the Act Man's tweet talking about how this mid-season update is more just kind of like a weekly update that you'd see like in League of Legends or any other kind of games out there. It made comparisons to Halo 5 saying we were getting tons of new content with Halo 5. How come we're not getting that with Halo Infinite being a live service game? Patrick Grant, who is a former senior multiplayer designer at Halo, now he's at a different company now working on the next uh, Jedi Fallen Order type of game. He said, the thing I will say about Halo 5 post-launch is is by the end of those six months, we were extremely burnt out. Monthly releases like that were extremely unsustainable, which is really great insight to kind of know about like what the development is, what's capable from 343 when it comes to providing these types of updates. Like when we heard like live service Halo game, free to play that like we were kind of expecting maybe like borderline Halo 5 level of updates. Now I do view of Halo 5's updates being more cut content rather than actual like updates that were being created. But this type of information is super important to know that like, hey, we just wanna know like, what can you guys accomplish with Halo Infinite? We have no idea right now, like concretely, like we expect new maps and maybe some new modes when it comes in customization, stuff like that when it comes to new seasons, but what's gonna happen between those months of seasonal releases? Like, are we just gonna get like these little events that be like, hey, here's a 10 pack, here pass, have some fun with it, or we're actually gonna get some kind of new content throughout the way of playing. Maybe it's gonna be kind of a trickle throughout the three months of content. We just don't know. And we do know that 343 is still working on putting together that roadmap, which Sketch said it's gonna be a year long roadmap, which at this point, I'm like, do we really need an entire year to know like what's gonna be coming, when it's going to happen? Because trying to plan out something a year in advance, especially when it comes to developing content for a game like Halo Infinite, where like if you're trying to say like, oh, this will be available a year down the road, that could be completely changed and different, which would make the roadmap kind of pointless. Like I think people just really wanna know like, what are we gonna get? What can we expect? Because we see other games out there like Call of Duty, Fortnite, Apex Legends, how they do their seasons and we're like, well, can we also get that for our game as well? And it seems like maybe not, but it does seem like we just need to have better communication of what to expect with these seasonal updates, what to expect from the live service. I mean, there have been tons of minor fixes with Halo Infinite so far within the first three months of the game being out. No, there have been minor changes. There hasn't really been anything that make you go, wow, I have to come back and play Halo Infinite. But of course I want it to be sustainable. I don't want to burn out the developers with, especially it being a live service game, the updates are continually happening with this game. So you want to find this nice balance of having a high level of productivity from your workforce, but also not completely burning them out where they just want to quit. And what Patrick Wren said right here seemed definitely like something that would burn people out pretty hard. So when it comes to like that infamous roadmap that's somewhere in the ether that's happening happening. I think we just need to know like concretely like what's happening within the next three months and then like roughly the next six months and then like big picture moving date kind of stuff but, like a year out like are we gonna get campaign DLC at the end of this year? No idea. How many maps are we gonna get? No idea. Any new modes? Any new kind of content that we've never had before in a Halo game? We have no idea. And I think the Halo community just wants to have that reassurance of like, yes, there is really cool stuff coming along the way. I don't think we're gonna get so caught up about specifically what date needs to happen. I mean, we were kind of conditioned to expect this moving date kind of a releases to happen with the MCC and the community was totally fine with it because we had these blog updates happening for MCC where they just said like, okay, well, we need like an extra month. We need an extra time for this, an extra time for that. And we're like, yeah. We understand, totally fine, but at least we know what's going on. So what can you do from now until season two's release? You can keep playing Halo Infinite. The ranks just got reset, so you can rank yourself back up to get your proper levels, or maybe just take a break, honestly. Like if you're kind of upset with the game, feeling burnt out, if little things are really upsetting you about it, take a break. No one's forcing you to play it. Halo's always gonna be there. There is gonna be a season two. There will be a season three, four, and five after that as well. Just come back when you want. I know it's hard to say as a Halo fan myself, I mean, I'm gonna continue playing the game because I really like playing Halo Infinite, but instead of playing it every single day like I have been, maybe just two or three times a week, or maybe just hop on when something new happens, like a new event or something like that. But one thing you can't miss out when it comes to Halo Infinite, this channel because it'll keep you up to date with everything happening with Halo. If you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I'm gonna link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos right there. Thank you so much for watching, greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.